Well, we move to the next speaker, which it's my turn uh, to present the research that we have been conducting at the University of Baja California in this region that is called the Eastern Tropical uh, North Pacific. Uh, and this research that I, I have been doing with my collaborator, Julio Villescusa, from the same university. Uh, to put this uh, uh, talk in perspective, uh, the, this talk is, tries to fill the gaps. And uh, this is uh, an image that I got from the Lamont uh, website that shows the different data sets uh, existing from different uh, observational systems that shows that Eastern Tropical North Pacific is really very undocumented in terms of uh, high resolution, well dated uh, data. There have been few studies that, uh, that have suggested, such as the paper by uh, Kienas in 2006 in Nature, who suggested that this area could be very important in the, in, uh, uh, in the millennial climate variability because he found that uh, he and his collaborators found that the uh, temperature anomalies that occur in this region uh, were closely, re closely related to the Antarctic, uh, Atlantic overturning, overturning circulation. So uh, uh, what we're going to do is to try to uh, fill a little bit of the gap with uh, high resolution data uh, of the last two centuries using coral records. And one of the most important facets of the Eastern Tropical North Pacific is the existence of a warm pool. Although it's very small compared to the sister that she has in the West Pacific, it is still a warm pool. It's a permanent feature that uh, stays there uh, throughout the year and throughout the years, uh, but it experiences changes at seasonal and interannual and decadal uh, uh, scales. Uh, and this is what I will try to show. Um, if we look more closely, one of the interesting features of this area is that uh, uh, probably there's no other place in the Pacific that shows a very uh, strong uh, temperature gradient, latitudinal gradient as this uh, region. Because you can go from the center of the warm pool, which is very tropical uh, 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 environment, like 31, 30 to 31 Celsius, into the realm of the California current, which, is, uh, which are temperate waters coming from the poles. Uh, and what we have here, this area in green, is the, uh, what is called that a transitional uh, Pacific. And it is transitional in many respects, but this uh, warm pool controls the biogeographic distribution of organisms. It is called the Panamic uh, Biogeographic Province that reaches up to here, uh, where basically where the, the, the realm of the California current starts. And uh, <clears throat> so at seasonal time scales, the California current uh, 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 invades this area, area and uh, cools the, 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 the region, this transitional zone. So this area shrinks uh, during the, 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 the uh, uh, summer and fall of uh, every year. And later on, uh, during the last part of the year and early part of the year, uh, surface equatorial water masses are arriving to this area and, and fill all the Gulf of California uh, up to here. So uh, uh, at interannual time, uh, time scales also, uh, during events of uh, the cold phase of El Nino, which is La Nina, uh, all the western uh, coast of the Americas uh, uh, get uh, cooler, including this region, even the, the, the warm pool becomes a little bit cooler. And uh, during the opposite situation, during El Nino, all this margin becomes uh, warmer than, than normal. And even the, 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 the warm pool doesn't show any anomaly because it is so warm already that it, uh, basically uh, it stays as, 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 as warm as, as it, is, it always is, but it expands into this area. So the warm pool increases all in this region. Uh, so uh, there are, uh, coral reefs living in this uh, transitional zone of the, of the Eastern Tropical Pacific that we decided to collect uh, uh, and to analyze. And uh, as you see, the El uh, Nino uh, phenomenon has a very similar spatial dominium as the, uh, as the uh, Pacific Decadal Oscillation. The main difference is in the, of course, in the periodicity. This goes from two to seven year cycles, and this one goes from 20 to 30 year cycles. 
uh, the other difference is in the intensity. El Nino has larger uh, uh, variability, more intense events than, than the PDO. But the idea with this study is that, is that by uh, uh, studying these uh, uh, changes in the transition zone of the uh, Eastern Tropical Pacific, we can document through time uh, the forcings from the tropics during El Nino events, and, and, and also we can uh, uh, document the extratropical forcings during the PDO uh, 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 variability. And this is one of the, the, the dreams that any uh, coral pelagianography would have to, 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 uh, to collect uh, for his studies. And uh, so what we do is uh, we, we drill the cores and then we generate, I cannot show all the things that we, that, that we do because I don't have much time, but I can, I can talk about that later if somebody has questions. Uh, this is a time series that we generated from uh, the coral record uh, from San Benedicto Island. Uh, it's about 200 years long, and it shows high uh, frequency variability that corresponds to the annual uh, cycles. And also, uh, just by eyeballing the graph, you can see uh, longer term cycles in this area. But before starting to uh, making any interpretations, uh, first, we do a calibration of what that, that strontium calcium uh, or magnesium calcium uh, ratios mean in terms of temperature. And we calibrated the, uh, the strontium calcium and magnesium uh, uh, ratios uh, against the uh, sea surface temperature obtained by satellite because, as, as you have seen, there are no uh, oceanographic data from this region. And that what we get is a, is a very good uh, uh, determination coefficients of 0.86, which are very good for, for uh, reconstruction uh, the paleo-oceanographic uh, characteristics of this zone. In red here, I'm showing the annual averages to clean up a little bit the, uh, the graph. And uh, on, on blue is the decadal moving average. And as you can see here, uh, just by this uh, simple filtering technique, that uh, we have uh, very clear um, uh, cycles that repeat almost every 20 years. You see 18, 1880, 1900, 1920, 1940, 1960. Um, and this 20-year cycle, approximately, uh, correlates very well with the work presented by Latif and Barnett uh, uh, in 1994 in which they used uh, temperature data, uh, a 50-year record temperature data from the North uh, Pacific, and they uh, found that there was a thermal heat anomaly uh, uh, that circled the Pacific, North Pacific Basin at a, at a rate of about, it took about 10 years to do a half a cycle, and then 20 years to complete the, the full uh, circling of this anomaly. Uh, when we do the power spectrum of the, the San Benedicto coral, what we see is most of the variability is concentrated around 20 years, um, which is uh, very encouraging when we compare this with the coral tree, uh, for, sorry, with that tree ring records from Southern California. This is the work by F Franco Biondi when he was uh, doing his uh, postdoc at Scripps, and he collected uh, uh, tree rings from uh, different pines in, in South, uh, Southern California and in, in, in Baja California. And uh, what he, he, well, he developed what, all what the, the endocrinologists do, but at the end, uh, most of the, the, the band of variation is concentrated around 20, 20 years, which agrees very well with the coral record. Um, if there's any place in the Pacific that is better uh, correlated with the PDO oscillation, that should be the Northeast Pacific, which is uh, where this index was developed from. Um, and what I'm showing here is the uh, comparison between the sea surface temperature from uh, uh, the Gulf of Alaska, Seattle, and San Francisco against the uh, PDO. And uh, just for you to see the level of correlation that exists between sea surface temperature records where there is uh, a, a very well correlation with the PDO, and what we would get uh, from the coral that we collected from this region. And what we get is a very, very also encouraging results of the valleys aligned very well with the valleys, the, the, the peaks with the peaks. And uh, it is as good the correlation as with uh, what happens in the Northeast Pacific, which basically uh, demonstrates the, that the coral records show very well the uh, uh, extra tropical forcing into this region. Um, <clears throat> 
If we go and try to un understand a little bit the interannual variability, what I did is uh, um, we collected the sea surface temperature anomaly time series from the El Nino three-point region, and uh, we applied a band pass filter of uh, uh, two to seven years, and so we removed all the, 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 the frequencies uh, outside this uh, domain, and we just concentrate on the El Nino uh, uh, frequencies, and what we have here is this uh, variability of El Nino intensity uh, through time. This is repeated here because I will put two different corals against this, uh, the same series. And what we have here is that uh, basically the coral from the Gulf of California uh, very well follows what is happening in, the, in, in this region um, when, the, when the intensity is very large uh, of El Nino, uh, also in the Gulf of California uh, this happens the same thing, and when it, it, when it decreases, uh, it also follows the same thing. You can see it more clearly here, how, how they, the, the amplitudes basically are in phase very well. And uh, one of the uh, good things uh, of having this coral from San Benedicto is that we actually we go beyond the sea surface temperature anomalies of the Nino 3.4 region, and uh, what we see here is that the El Nino band uh, shows very unprecedented uh, uh, amplitudes of, uh, well, intensities for El Nino, that means that there were much stronger El Nino and La Nina uh, in the early 1800s than what we have already seen. Uh, <clears throat> so if, uh, if uh, I take the uh, sea, uh, sea surface temperature signal derived from the strontium calcium and apply a singular spectrum analysis, what I, got, what I get are two uh, uh, dominant frequencies, one of 4.5 years and another of 2.5 years. And uh, both of them, as you know, correspond to the, 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 the frequencies of El Nino. So in order to make the analysis easier, uh, instead of working with two graphs, I've just combined them into a single graph that I called the Enso band. And what we have here is, it is easier to analyze because what we have here is that we can see that during the 1950s and 60s, El Nino intensity was very, very low. And uh, during the er early 1800s, uh, we have very, very strong um, ENSO activity. We also can see here that uh, after the 1970s, uh, uh, El Nino intensity has been uh, gradually uh, increasing through time. I don't know if it is related to the, the onset of the climate change or, or if it is pa part of this uh, natural var variability. Uh, <clears throat> Another interesting uh, thing that we found is that when we do the stable isotopes in the corals, uh, what we find here is uh, uh, something that most of the oceanographers and, and specialists in uh, uh, ocean atmosphere interaction is that uh, at this point in the 1976, there is a, a big jump in the, uh, in the oxygen isotopic signal um, that also is followed by the, by the strontium calcium, which shows a warming but it's stronger in the, uh, the oxygen isotope. So what we did is we, we deconvoluted the, the signal so to try to, to reconstruct the, uh, the oxygen isotopic composition variability of seawater. And what we get here is this uh, big change in the, uh, the uh, isotopic composition of the water uh, that coincides very well with this uh, uh, climatic uh, regime shift. And when we compare, to see if it is a, a good reconstruction, to validate our reconstruction, we compare this with the uh, NASA experiment, uh, a hydrologic ba balance experiment that they are conducting with satellites uh, for the Gulf of California. And what we get is uh, uh, that they are very well in phase with the hydrologic balance. So when, the, when it is uh, 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 less cloudy, there's more evaporation in the Eastern Tropical Pacific and the water becomes uh, isotopically heavier, and it inverse when the ETCC moves to the north, produces rains, and the ocean water becomes uh, uh, isotopically more negative. Thank you. Uh, so if we apply a, a low pass filter to the uh, uh, reconstructed isotopic composition of the water, uh, what we can see is this uh, variation that follows very well the Southern Desolation Index, also with a, a same filter, and with the El Nino 3.4 region. And when we correlate the, uh, the isotopic composition of the water with the position of the ITCC, we also uh, uh, see that there is a, uh, a, a good relationship, but it is inverse. So that means that 
whenever the ITCC moves to the north into the tropical Pacific, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the isotopic composition of water becomes uh, lighter, which means uh, more rainfall. And uh, the opposite, when the ITCC moves to the south, it is a dry area, a lot of evaporation because it is the subtropical region, and so the ocean water becomes more uh, positive. So uh, what we have here is that we can reconstruct the, the, the movement of the ITCC through time by looking at the, uh, the del W of the coral, derived from corals. And this is just an example that happened during El Nino. The ITCC moves all the way into this region and uh, produces a lot of rainfall and changes the isotopic composition of the water. Uh, and the coral is recording that. Now, to put that in, in finally in perspective, just to finish up, uh, how does this relate to uh, the coral record with the uh, a longer term uh, climatic variability? And uh, these, uh, the Mann and Jones uh, record uh, include this part of the instrumental record for the northern hemisphere. And when we plot the, the sea surface temperature anomaly derived from the coral, we get almost a perfect uh, fit. And this, uh, this uh, is very surprising because a lot of the coral pelicanographers have been always uh, uh, saying in their uh, literature, in their papers, that coral records are on par with instrumental records. And uh, if these are proxies and Coral also is a proxy. Well, coral follows much better the, uh, the instrument than the multi-proxies. And something that uh, called my attention is the discrepancy between the blade of a hockey stick and the actual, if you're willing to accept that coral represents very well the uh, uh, sea surface temperature variability of the uh, uh, northern hemisphere, then there is a, 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 a big discrepancy. Well, not so big, but significant between both records. But also, we also have to uh, recognize that the authors were very honest because uh, we see this yellow band, which is the, uh, the uncertainty. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's natural to expect that their, their estimate uh, has uh, uh, many degrees of tolerance. But our record shows that probably the hockey stick blade um, is not as steep as it was thought, that the warming started earlier. But although, after the Industrial Revolution, uh, the steep, this one is, is, is confirmed that it is a very steep uh, warming. Um, and uh, just in summary, the warm pool of the Eastern Tropical Pacific is a highly sensitive site for studying global climate change variability uh, at interannual, uh, decadal, and the KNS work shows that also at millennial scale variability. The coral strontium calcium record shows um, that is highly coherent with the instrumental record of, this, uh, of uh, the Northern Hemisphere, that uh, there is a regime shift during 1966 approximately, which is also very well documented in uh, several studies, that they record the um, Pacific Decadal Oscillation with approximately 21 years of, uh, of uh, uh, psych, uh, periodicity. And uh, the ENSO activity also was very strong, much stronger than, than uh, uh, in recent times, and it also coincides with uh, uh, the largest mortalities uh, uh, of people in India and China at that time. And uh, um, also, uh, it is documented that, that uh, uh, El Nino is increasing uh, in, uh, in, um, in intensity uh, during the recent times of the onset of the climate change. And, well, that is all. Thank you very much for your attention. I don't know. Thorsten, how much time? Time for one question? There in the back? Can you explain why you think that the um, coral record should be for northern hemisphere temperature? No idea, but uh, uh, this is surprising to me because uh, I was just trying to see uh, how it well compared, but uh, it was surprising to see that it fits very well. So basically, it is uh, warming at the same rate as uh, the whole uh, northern hemisphere. Some other regions may also may be warming at that average rate, but particularly this site apparently is showing that it's warming uh, uh, in, a, in agreement with uh, the whole uh, northern hemisphere. That's what I, uh, the most that I can speculate from now. <laughs>